Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought uh, another nice problem in which uh, many students find a lot of difficulty and uh, um, some of my students uh, they were really stuck at how to proceed and how to make the equations so that's why I decided to do a video this uh, pathfinder current electricity build your understanding problem 28 so without much ado let me straight away get into the analysis of the problem okay so let's see the problem first of all and then uh, we'll see the solution okay so let me go to the problem so here's the problem statement let me read it out a multi-range milliampere is made by providing a set of interchangeable shunts and a micro ampere range galvanometer this milliampere is connected in a circuit to measure current when one milliampere range is selected it reads i1 is equal to 1 milliampere and when 3 milliampere range is selected it reads i2 is equal to 1.5 milliampere what is the true current in the circuit without the milliampere make suitable assumptions okay so uh, you know that when we uh, shunt uh, uh, galvanometer we can uh, change its range okay so we if we have first of all converted into 1 milliampere range and then the reading itself was the full scale deflection equal to the full scale deflection in the second case when we change the shunt, the reading and change the shunt to make the range 3 milliamperes, the reading changed to 1.5 milliamperes. So you see there, are, there is a huge swing in the reading of the uh, milliameter. So uh, and uh, we have to find what would have been the true current if uh, the ammeter was not there, just uh, uh, the, the original setup itself, if uh, ammeter was just replaced by a short. Okay. So if you want, you can give it a try. I'll get into my analysis right away. Okay, let's see. So what's the concept here? Whenever a micro ampere range galvanometer is converted into milliampere range ammeter, the net resistance of the ammeter is approximately equal to the uh, resistance of the shunt itself. Why? Because generally the shunt resistance will be very, very small. So let me just uh, prove it to you uh, very briefly. A small proof here. So suppose I is the current going through this and IG is the full scale deflection current then through the shunt the current flowing will be I minus IG right where I is the required range of the uh, or the, uh, uh, the converted the range to which we have converted the galvanometer into ammeter so so here I minus IG is going so uh, equating the potential difference through these two paths so I can say IG into G should be equal to I minus IG into shunt and that gives me the value of shunt as approximately if you see uh, now i is i is of the order of milliamperes whereas ig is of the order of microamperes so i minus ig is uh, approximately you can say uh, i itself so uh, if you uh, ignore subtraction small subtraction term here and you can just solve for shunt so approximate shunt value is simply uh, ig into g upon i where i is the uh, milliameter uh, milliamperes range and ig is the microamperes uh, okay so since i is much much greater than ig i can say that shunt will also be much much less than g why because ig by i is a very small term so shunt value is very very small as compared to the galvanometer resistance right so this means suppose we want to triple the range of uh, uh, triple uh, tri uh, triple the range of i should have written here uh, triple the range of uh, no that's fine suppose i wanted to triple the range of certain um, ammeter uh, suppose I am working with some shunt and uh, I am getting some range and I want to make the range triple of the original range then shunt should be made almost 1 by 3 times I can see this clearly from equation 2 why because uh, when you uh, make this I th 3 times then S is obviously becomes 1 by 3 times right now why I am talking about uh, 3 times because if you see in the original question in initial range was 1 milliampere and the final range is uh, 3 milliamperes right so that's why i'm talking about tripling the range okay now uh, what's the effective resistance of the ammeter so if you look at the effective resistance of ammeter it is gs upon g plus s why because g and s are in parallel so gs in parallel make it gs upon g plus s but this must also be equal to approximately s why because i showed you that uh, g is much much greater than s when it's a matter of milliamperes and microamperes so uh, denominator can be approximately taken as g itself and therefore we can say that ammeter resistance is almost equal to the shunt resistance when we are talking about converting micro to milliampere range okay 
and therefore we can also say that when the range is tripled for the ammeter if you triple the range that means total resistance becomes 1 by 3 times approximately we can say the total resistance of the ammeter also becomes 1 by 3 times okay now uh, coming to the current problem so uh, whatever be the circuit uh, i can always create a thevenin equivalent across the ammeter so if you are not familiar with thevenin equivalent you can search for the thevenin um, video on my channel I have given the detailed proof, I stated the theorem, also given the detailed proof of uh, Thevenin and why it works. So if you want, you can have a look at that one. Uh, here I am going to use the Thevenin directly. So let E Thevenin and R be the Thevenin EMF and resistance of the rest of the circuit across the ammeter when the range is 1 milliampere and let the corresponding resistance of the ammeter be RA. So here is my circuit. So original circuit I have replaced by a single battery of E Thevenin and uh, thevenin resistance small r and here is my ammeter and let's say effective uh, resistance of ammeter is ra so what is the current in the first case so current in the first case will be e thevenin divided by ra plus r you see series ra and this r and which is given as 1 milliampere okay now what happens when you convert the range to three times so now the range is now uh, 3 milliampere i should have written here uh, 3 milliampere so let me correct this so now when the range is 3 milliamperes you know that uh, the, uh, the effective resistance must have become 1 by 3 times as I showed you earlier. And now the current in the second case will be what? E Thevenin divided by RA by one, uh, 3 and plus Thevenin resistance. And that is given as 1.5 milliamperes, right? So now if you consider equation 4 and 5, they are simultaneous equations in e, uh, e Thevenin and R Thevenin, okay? And we can solve for E Thevenin and R Thevenin. If you do that, you get uh, this as uh, E Thevenin and you get this as R Thevenin. And once you know E Thevenin and R Thevenin, you can simply calculate the current. Uh, if you replace the ammeter by short circuit, the current in the original circuit is simply E Thevenin by R Thevenin. Okay. So that is simply you divide these two terms and you get uh, this as the current. So this is my answer for the expression of the current in the original circuit in absence of the ammeter and if you put in the values i1 is 1 milliampere i2 is 1.5 milliampere if you solve it you get 2 milliampere so that was my analysis for the problem hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you did uh, find my video helpful please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with them thanks a lot for watching this video and yes most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel uh, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated uh, to do a new video for you frequently. And uh, thanks for watching this and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.